Hello, everybody. Welcome back to this episode. Or not welcome back to this episode. Welcome, welcome to this, to episode, this episode. Right? How are you, dude? Good. Oh, good. Beat you to it. Um, we sit down with Haskell Bennett on this week's episode of Meaningful People Podcast. But first, of course, you want to give a big shout out to a new friend of ours who you're going to be hearing a lot about, and that is Infinity Land Services. Momo. Infinity Land Services. <laughs> does it? Does it? You feeling it? I'm feeling it. It's going to develop. Yes. It's going to develop. So um, it's got to be an organic development. My friend the other day, he's buying a house and he forgot to tell the title company when the closing date was. Interesting. <laughs> like that is a big no no. Oh, that's a that's a and, ball drop. That's what we call a ball drop. That, that is he dropped the ball. But luckily, Infinity Land Services was on his team. Swoops in. They swoop in. They're like, okay, listen, we're not thrilled that you didn't tell us about <laughs> the closing date, but we're not going to make any excuses. Wow. And ILS, Infinity Land Services, they make sure they got the job done. Get it done. No horror stories, no excuses. They're going to get the job done for you people. Get it done. So that's why you need to get in touch with Infinity Land Services. You can head to infinitylandservices.com. They just did a beautiful rebrand from our friends at Anellis Group, Ellie Shower, Perlman, and Co. They did a great job, and you're going to hear a lot about them on this podcast. And I want to say hello to a new friend of ours. Shazak. Oh, is that their thing? No, no, no. I don't know. I just made it. Shazak. 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 Venice Chazek. Venice Chazek. Of Nishazik. Very good. Shazak is, is, is an amazing website that, again, people can watch content on. It's geared for kids. It's great for adults. It's geared for kids, and it's great for adults. That's what, that's what I just said. That's their thing, though. That's their thing. And you want to try it out, you can head to their website, shazak.com. That's S-H-A-Z-A-K.com. Shazak.com. And to get more com. granular just for one second, because it's not just... It's not just kosher content. Yeah. It's Torah content. It's Torah content. You can take like quizzes, I think, on the Parsha stuff that you learn, uh, on, on, on you do there. I'm telling you, you know what? Let's give them our login. Do it. So go ahead and log into, go to shazak.com and log in. Uh, use the username MP, it's capital MP, Shazak, S-H-A-Z-A-K, and password is 613. That's 613. Log in for like a little bit. Like the number bit. of mitzvahs. Yes. 613. Like that. And log in and see how you enjoy it. And when you decide that you want to purchase it and, and get this, we'll give you 25% off. Use promo code Hanukkah. That's the regular way of spelling Hanukkah. It's C-H-A-N-U-K-A-H. No one H- N, one N. No H-A-N-N-N-N. How many N- variants? Variations are there to the spelling of Hanukkah? One million three hundred and thirty thousand. Very deep. So that is Shazak for you. Make sure to head to their website and just log in and try it out with your children. Maybe you'll love it, um, and you'll decide to buy it. And again, Hanukkah is that promo code. So Haskell Bennett, what a, a legend! Oh, um, we discuss. Fuck. We discuss. Fire. Yeah, he is fire. Yeah, there, Haskell. There's so many points of this interview that I wanted to give him a standing ovation, but like if I stood up, my head would be off the camera, and I just didn't. Um, but of course, if maybe you watched this on the RCCS live stream. They didn't. This aired on RCCS the other night. Um, if you didn't, you can watch it now. Again, we want to give a big shout out to our people at RCCS. They had an amazing auction. And if you do want to still get involved in what they're doing in their campaign, the link is in the description, in the show notes. They had an awesome, awesome time. I think they raised over four million dollars. Claudia wow. Sherall is out of this world. We are incredible. Who is like us? Nobody. Ain't nobody like us. They hate us because they ain't us. What's up? <laughs> Hashtag that. Put it on a bumper magnet. Okay. Haskell. Maki's in the zone right I'm now. I'm in the zone right now because I had Diet Coke this morning. Lies. It wasn't Diet. It was regular Coke. Good. Haskell, take it away. You are listening to the Meaningful People Podcast. The podcast featuring our nation's most impactful, influential, and meaningful people. Okay, we are sitting here with Haskell Bennett. What an Welcome. honor. What an Rebbe. honor. Mishpach over here. Yes. Important, important to note. Mechatanim. Kvalt. Ah. Nepotism, alive and well. <laughs> and we also have the uh, the Camp Monk Trinity alive and well. Yeah. I remember when you used to come to camp. You do? On those Matzah Shabbosim. Sit on the those benches in front of the main building. I came to visit my Rebbe. Redove a drink. I never left. He never left Camp Monk. And because he never left Camp Monk, I never left Camp Monk. Good He's the oldest camper. He was the oldest camper in camp, 50 years. Wow. Mm. Unbelievable. So let's start, I guess, at, you know, at the beginning of your life. Where'd you grow up? Um, what's it like having the name Haskell? I don't know so many Haskells. Do you know many Haskells? It's a, it's a, it's a rare what's unique your, name. What's your name? Is Haskell? Haskell Schrager. Haskell Schrager. But Haskell. Very rubbish and Newman. Yeah. There's, yeah. There's, there's no Haskells nowadays. Right. So I, I, uh, it's interesting you say that because, uh, 
I hated the name when I was a kid. Oy. I did not love the name at all. Chaskel or Chaskel Shraga? Chaskel. I okay. just, I felt like what you just said, Moishi, Chaim, Tzvi, you know, normal names, Yitzchak. <laughs> Why do I have to be Chaskel? Right. As I got older, though, I had learned to appreciate the uniqueness and the originality of it. Mm. And the uh, fasc- and most fascinating part of the Chaskel stuff is that I always knew, interesting, we'll talk about this later, that there was a yid that my father used to get the Jewish Observer, and I, I was a young kid and I couldn't read the Jewish Observer because it was very scholarly. So I used to love to see the ads and the pictures. I was a kid. What was I eight, nine, ten? And invariably there would be a picture of the great Rabbi Chaskel Besser. Mm. And so I always knew that there was a super. I didn't know the word Askin back then. A super uh, Kal Yisrael hero named Rabbi Chaskel Besser. And uh, that had an influence on me. And in, in fact, my first I go to convention, I met Rabbi Besser for the first time. So mm. And uh, somebody brought me over to him. Says, uh, Rabbi Besser, this is Chaskel Bennett. With a big smile, if you knew Rabbi Besser. Huge, beautiful smile, beautiful face. He says, ah, the Ander Chaskel. <laughs> <laughs> made my day, made my life. Wow. And so, uh, yeah, interesting name. I'm named after my grandfather. My grandfather's father. Was he known as Chaskel also? He was known as Chaskel Weiss, yes. All right, Mr. Shem. That's, yeah. that's beautiful. Right. That's really nice. So thank you so much for, for joining us here. Um, you grew up in Queens. Yes, Kew Garden Hills. Quite, quite a place. The Forgotten Borough. Literally. <laughs> Very quiet. Uh, yeah, Kew Garden Hills was an interesting place in the 1970s. Um, great, great neighborhood. I thought, wonderful I thought you were born in the 90s. You were born in the 70s? I'm an old man. What? It's hard to believe. I, <laughs> when I joined the Aguda board, not this time when they announced it. I don't know why they announced it. When I joined the Aguda, I was the youngest member of the Aguda board. It was, that was like my, How old by, are you? That was my byline. I don't know. It was about 10 years ago. Oh, nice. Like it was a young guy. He was finally a young guy on the board. Wow. The youngest guy. I'm not the youngest guy on the board anymore. Um, 1970s. And you said Q- you trailblazed. Yeah. Okay. Set the trend. Start young. Yes. Or whatever. Call it what you wish. <laughs> and, um, the 1970s, Kew Garden Hills, great neighborhood. Everybody knew everybody. It's a very close knit community. One side knew the other. There were not that many shoals. Um, it was really I, I, it's so funny. Uh, I meet people all the time. They know my family's there. My family's still there. So for me, Kew Garden Hills was a great place to grow up, but it was also a little bit behind the curve. It was not. I don't want to say it was not exciting. It was a wonderful, beautiful neighborhood. Still is. Fantastic people, real people. Um, um, and for me personally, I always felt like the action was in Brooklyn. <laughs> and uh, so I always had my eye and everywhere else but Kew Garden Hills. Oh, that's a, it's in Hancock Park, no? In LA. That's where. What? Is the that, action. Is Hancock Park in LA? Oh, is that where it is? Is it? I don't know. Not like Brooklyn. <laughs> I like Brooklyn. I used to go off Shabbos and my poor parents. I used to, when I went to Yeshiva, I went to Adelphia. Yeah, I went to Adelphia, and I'm proud to say I went to Adelphia, <laughs> yes. My Rebbe was Abdavid Train, we'll get to that. Yeah. And and off Shabbasa, my poor mother, I, ne- I never came home. I wanted to go to my friends in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. So I but you had you had uh, Shimon's. At Shimon's, yes, I was there for Shimon's. Sandwich Benji's. bar, maybe? Somewhere. No way. It didn't exist? No, sir. Okay. No, Shimon's, Benji's came later. The combos were there, yeah? Uh, K- Kamenetsky's? Yeah. Yeah, sure, of course. Good people. They're still there. Great people. I remember, I remember, Some of them. I remember, Chaim, I remember, Chaim, Chaim. Chaim. Yeah. Sure. Chaim we went to Yeshiva Teres Moshe, it was a very close knit community, Tiff-mo, and Tiff-mo. Kew Garden Hills, Forest Hills, Kew Gardens, Hillcrest, and Regal Park, and uh, look, we were together, but Brooklyn for me was always somewhere down the, you know, in my eyesight and on my vision, I ultimately ended up marrying a Brooklyn girl and then moved to Brooklyn, and uh, yeah, that was my... I live in Brooklyn. It's hard to me. say that the grass was always greener about Brooklyn because there's not a whole lot of grass. No, oh, no there grass we go. No. There we go. Get no, a dig you know, at Brooklyn. The, the, when, at that point of my life, I was looking for action and for getting involved and being involved. And like, as I get older, I'm slowly starting, <laughs> starting to not so not so much the traffic. It's and so the funny because Brooklyn is not trending nowadays. Um, not a lot of young people living there. Yeah, it's mixed. It's a mixed bag. Bro, Flatbush is Flatbush is a huge community, gigantic. There's so much going on over there. Still. Still, sure. hundreds of shoals and 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 people and and moistus and all sorts of great stuff that happened and you know Flatbush is still a major. I, I major thought that North Woodbury took all the people from Flatbush. Erroneous. I didn't know that Flatbush. Erroneous. I mean, look, like every like every neighborhood in, in Clayusol. Let's face it, there's a lot of change going on. Yeah, 
Uh, gentrification is a good word mm. of, of neighborhoods, you know. Uh, that is a good North word. North Woodmere, it is a good word. Not really sure what it means, but, it's, <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds good. Oh, it's a spectacular right. word. Uh, there is a lot of change. There really is. And, you know, Tom's River and Lakewood, Muncie, uh, Five Towns, a lot of change. Boca. Yeah, Boca, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Florida, for sure. And uh, so, you know, there's a lot of change in Cayasol, but I think some of the stalwart neighborhoods... Like Flatbush, are, are, they're, they're still okay. Before we get to sort of the uh, the roles that you took on in life, uh, the things that you've done, you know, as a little kid, I know that you went to Camp Monk. And right. uh, I'm just curious, you know, I went to Camp Monk, Momo went, Momo went to Camp Monk. Uh, what, you know, what Camp Monk, what role that played in your life or the impact it had in your life? And and I know Robert Trank was there, was... Did you know Norway train in Camp Monk before you went to Delphi or was it vice versa? So for me, the Camp Monk connection was that I had an uncle. My mother's two brothers, uh, two uncles, went to Camp Monk. So it was a family thing. Um, As it is for everybody. Right. It was a re- really a family thing. My uncle was there at the time. He's a, another Camp Monk legend older than, than me uh, by nine years. Are we going to name drop or not? Uh, Isaac Weiss. from okay. He lives in Los Angeles. Hank Park. Sure. Uh, he was a head waiter. Everybody knew him. Um, so my mother felt comfortable sending a seven year old or eight mm. years old. I, I'm not, I don't, I don't really, I can't play, I can make a figure it out, but I was, qu- I was quite, <laughs> I was quite young for, for sleepaway camp, but I was a handful and I absolutely, yeah. absolutely loved it. It was the greatest thing that ever happened. Uh, I would sit the entire year in Khazarover <laughs> camp every night. My mother would and I would talk about camp. She loved camp as a kid. So for me, camp was was the most tremendous outlet, and it was really the best thing that ever happened to me as a child who was exuberant and had a lot of energy. Uh, today they have uh, titles and names for those kinds of things, you know, mm. uh, HD, DD, DD. No, HD is high definition, but yeah. You know, I don't want to say it, but in truth, in truth, um, for me, I didn't notice. I, I actually allude to it in, in the Rabbi Trank book. I, I was given a tremendous honor of, uh, of being able to write the foreword in that book uh, by Gedalia Zlotowicz, my dear friend, the Camp Monk friend. Uh, all good things come from Camp Monk. He's a wonderful person, good guy, real leader in Claudia Swell, proud to be his friend. I was with him before he was that. Mm. Um, Rabbi Trank was larger than life from the first time I laid eyes on him. He was an incredible uh, influence in every possible way. Here was a man I, I, I wrote, uh, he was my Rebbe, and he was the greatest Rebbe on earth, and we, when I didn't know what the next moment would bring, so I was just holding on for dear life. I didn't know what, I didn't care. For me, it was just, this was this was my man. The first time For I, anyone that's not familiar, by the way, Art Scroll um, published the book "Just Love Them" on Rabbi Trank. I, I I implore anyone that is not familiar with this book. I, I was telling my wife recently of everything that Art Scroll has put out to to consume and to read about different tzaddikim, different gedolim of previous generations of of our, our time. It is such a striking right. narrative right. Mm-hmm. about a man who is so unique in his and, way. And, what, and what's most unusual about this book? is that it didn't touch the surface mm. of the man. Wow. It did not touch the surface. You could probably write five books. I think Rebbets and Trank, Mrs. Trank, says it all the time. There's so much that they did not include here. And the Adelphia guys say, too much Camp Monk. <laughs> so uh, for, <laughs> me personally, I w- for me personally, Camp Monk in Adelphia is just fine. But, yeah. but for me, the first time I ever really noticed him, and I, and I make mention of that, is um, he would stand up and lead the camp uh, when a Godel Israel would come. Now, Camp Monk is not one of these, you know, huge camps. It's not five, six, seven thousand kids. It's two hundred and ten kids. I think. I think now it's a little, little bit larger. Maybe two hundred and fifty. But maybe not, a little larger. Yeah, you think? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know the numbers. But by us, it was about two hundred and ten every year. And it yeah, was yeah. still like. And it was the same kids. I mean, they would just let the new kids come in in the lowest bunks. But basically, we all went up the same way. That's why it's a fraternity. That's why we all know each other. Anyway. So Abdavid was given the honor of of really leading the the the, the camp into understanding what to do when a gadol bishwal comes, and my first recollection was Rambiak of Kamenetsky, Zechel Tzadik of Kaddish came. I think it was 1980, 
And I, 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 I didn't know who, Gadol, Rab Yaakov, who are these people? And I see this man just jumping and running and running and jumping, running down the hill, up the <laughs> hill. The whole camp is lined up in their big day Shabbos. And he's just screaming, boys, a Gadol be Yisrael is coming. And, and for a young kid, eight years old, to stand there and watch this, eyes wide open. I, I mean, I'm, I'm getting shivers just repeating it. I've said this story over a thousand times. How do you not have reverence for Gadol Yisrael at the age of 50 when you had a Rebbe who taught you at the age of eight that you put your entire being into honoring who is today royalty in Kal Yisrael? And that has, for me personally, has affected me in, a, in, a, in many, many ways. My Rebbe taught us, my parents, Baruch Hashem, my father is also so long a yarn, very much Machshev Gedele Yisrael, but the, the exuberance, the enthusiasm, the the just sheer love of life and reverence for David strengths for a Gadol Yisrael was beyond anything that I had ever seen before. Like, who is this guy? Mm-hmm. Who is this man? I remember once, and this happened once or twice every summer when a Gadol would come to camp and Rabbi Trank would, you know, run up and down that driveway and... There, one time it happened when it was a beautiful day and, you know, it was very easy for everyone to be outside. It's my favorite story, what you're about to say. And then one time it was just pouring rain and he was doing the same exact thing. Right. Undeterred, add unaffected. To, add to that because he brings it down in the book, which I have here. I brought it, I brought it with us just because such I knew we, we would talk about him. He stood like a soldier. Mm. Everyone else ran for the hills. <laughs> Umbrella is pouring, you know, a Catskill yeah. summer summer rain. The man stood there like a soldier. And I have a dream. And I've I've spoken to an artist. I never I haven't pursued it all the way yet, but I have a dream. That is the picture I want of my Rebbe on the on the wall. Good the rain is pouring, everyone is scattered, and there he is in his spot that a Godel be soil is coming. And there ain't no rain in the world that's going to throw me off message. Wow. <laughs> There's a challenge to all of our artists, artistic yeah. listeners, yeah, to sketch yeah. that out. Right. It's, for it's, it's, it's just... Uh, wow. So so you have that kind of influence that, that really carried me, went through it. I mean, he was my kind of person. I, if I could say that. He was, he was l- living life to Spoke its fullest. He was so real and, and, and happy just a happy person, such a, and and matched my energy by a hundred, and everybody loved Makes him. Makes you look shy. And everybody loved him and loved him, and everybody knew him because he was there for so many years. So it was not like, oh, Rabbi Trank, even one of the story again, go back to the story. Somebody says, oh, Rabbi Trank is here. I think I had his father as a learning rabbi. <laughs> he says, the kid says, no, you had him. <laughs> Uh, right, so that for me was an influence that carried over, and I, and I said to my mother when it came time for high school, I said, "Ma, I'm I'm going with him. I'm going to Adelphia. I had a lot of chaverim, good guys, really good guys. Ari Monk and Shua Stefanski, and and uh, a bunch of wonderful people who 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 were Adelphia guys. You know, the Stern brothers, Yossi Stern, Rabbi Stern, uh, uh, son, the Rashiva son. Anyway." I, I'm going with him, and and I went to Delphia to be with Rabbi Trank all year round, and they became like just we were together, and, and, and but not as everyone thinks. It wasn't always you know peaches and cream. He was yeah very serious about chinuch, and he was knew good what he was doing. It wasn't just a free for all. You may think it is, but he was extremely calculated, and he understood kids. He mun for me. I've said this more than once. Not just just love them is a very nice title for the book and he did but the just love them didn't only come with unconditional love he mun for me very stark and he was very very tough on me sometimes tougher on me because he knew me and he expected more from me and uh um, that's real love yeah you know? no 100 percent. but when you're a high school kid it's not so simple no and, sure and uh you know it, it takes you you have to be mature enough to understand and appreciate that which i wasn't and i didn't all the time. As I got older, I recognized it. Um, but certainly, he, he was a master mechanach in every way possible. He knew how to motivate kids. He knew how to bring out the best in children. And it wasn't all about learning and learning and learning and learning. Recess was important. Sports was important. Music was important. And to me, that was my oxygen. I played keyboard. I taught myself drums. I loved basketball. I, 
all the things that he recognized as being a tool to get you to become what he felt that you could become were all I was bought in. And and all of his Talmudim, you could ask anyone, and he found every Nakuda that applied to you to figure out in you what if you love to cook, he recognized it and you became the cook. Brings down the book of a story of a kid, you know, who he got into trouble actually on a Matzah Shabbos. He was making eggs illegally in the kitchen like all yeshivas do. <laughs> and he was very angry at them and he shut them down. And then two weeks later, he told the boy, he said, the bacher, he said, the boys love your eggs. I want you to start making eggs. Wow. So it took two weeks. You got your lesson. You were doing something illegal. Now ask Rishos and do it responsibly. But you have a kishrin. You have a talent. And I want you to use it. And I want you to be good at it. Now, do you not think that that kid felt like a zillion dollars? His Rebbe recognized that he had a talent in him. That kid now tomorrow in Sheer, and, and 10 years from now in Sheer, and 20 years now, that kid grows up being recognized for having a talent, which is so important today to figure out what every person can contribute to Kal Yisrael. There's so many people who feel lost, who feel left out, who feel shut out because they haven't found an ability to participate and to be productive and and they have the ability if only someone would recognize it and it becomes it goes from being depressed about it to being angry about it and that manifests itself in my experience to being angry at Yiddishkeit to be angry at Rabbonim to be angry at people and it's so sad and it's so fixable if we could just find Look, look! You guys are—you guys found something fantastic to do. You're—you're you're, you're doing something magnificent. You're bringing, you're getting people into conversation. You're good conversationalists. Instead of just shooting the breeze on a corner or after shul on Shabbos, you're doing something productive with it. You're—you're you're bringing out good people and sharing them. We call yourself. It's a wonderful talent. There are tens of thousands of people who are sitting at home now listening to this. And you have to ask yourself, what talent do I have that I can use to contribute to call yourself? Every gemach that ever was created was created by someone who says, I can do something. I, I've mentioned this many, many times. I've written about it. Every good organization in Kal Yisrael, every great organization in Kal Yisrael, name it. RCCS, Bone Olam, Hatzala, Agudas Yisrael, and, 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 and on and on and on have all been started by a person or a group of people was not started as like this community consortium. Let's mm-hmm. figure it out. Think about the, the the gigantic talent that that and 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 contribution of the people. Uh, Rabbi Weber, uh, Herschel Weber, who started out solo. Yeah, think about it. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's beyond crazy. That one person saw something wrong and fixed it. Bonnie Olam is no different. RCCS is no different. And High Lifeline, and one after the other after the other, somebody somewhere in the recesses of their mind saw a need, a void, and filled it, and is filling it, and Claudia Sol is the beneficiary of it, and the best is yet to come. If you're watching this and you're listening to this, find your place and contribute. We need you. I don't even know know what to say. Standing O. Yeah, standing, up. Like st- uh, standing ovation. But uh, you, yeah, the, I could definitely see the passion inside of you. Rabbi Trink definitely probably played a role in that. And he should continue. Uh, I may have asked him for you, and we all should be reunited and have Rabbi David sitting here, or not here, but in Yerushalayim, uh, shooting a breeze with him. There isn't, a, there isn't a day that I don't think about him. Not yeah. a day, not a day. And I'm not just saying that. There are a lot of times where I'm faced with a situation, what should I do? How should I react? I'll give you a great example. There was a person in the Catskills. I don't want to say the the the, the, the specific story because I don't want to. I don't want the person who if he would hear this, I don't want him to feel bad. But he obviously looked lost, and I could have ignored him. He was walking this way, I was walking that way, and I saw him, and he saw me, and I nodded, and we went our separate ways. And then the next day, I saw him again. And I said to myself, there's a reason why I'm seeing this guy. What would my Rebbe do with this guy? And I struck up a conversation with him. Simply, nothing fancy, nothing gigantic. I'm not the world's greatest hero. I simply stopped 
and took an interest in someone who, to me, obviously looked like someone should take an interest in him. I only did that because I thought to myself, what would Rebbe Trang do? Wow. Now, Chazal say, Tzadikim b'misosam kruyim chayim, which means that Tzadikim live on in their legacy. And I think this is a, a very clear illustration where Rebbe Trang has imparted this approach to Chinuch, this, this way of life, really. And, and Rabbi Trink is alive in that story, yes. in every one of his Talmidim no question, no that question. carry out his Mahalach. No question. I knew at the, at the end of his career, at the end of his life, I didn't have to wait till he was Nifta to recognize the legend that he was. I, 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 had, I figured it out. He was beyond special. But Camp Monk, going back to your original question, for me, Camp Monk opened my eyes up to many, many special people. Um, and again, a kid from Queens who sort of was, I don't want to say reserved or away from the rest of the world. It's not true. I don't want to make Queens out to be this, this, out of this, town, out of town kind, <laughs> of, kind of community. But, but let's be fair, going to camp, you get exposed to fantastic people. And Camp Monk was legendary for having the best of the best yeah. in terms of uh, world, world renowned. Mechanchem, Josh Silberman was for me, you know, I did, again, did not appreciate who he was at the time that I had him, but but over time, you learn to recognize that everyone is like, this man is a legend. He is the the original. How, how are we supposed to recognize? I know, because there, there are people who are who are right now in their own lives, whether they're in school or in camp or in, in an office, they are encountering the person who, after this person passes, or after the the they get older, everyone's gonna be saying that person is a legend. Right. How do we identify those legends in our midst while they're still alive and be able to appreciate them? First of all, the legends never let on that they're a legend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They just do their thing. It's not about them. So we say about this podcast, by the way. If you ask to be on the podcast, and right. you, then you just right. can't. Right. It's, so it doesn't let, work. Let's like be that. clear. No, you didn't ask to be on. <laughs> okay. Not only that, you fought me for a while. Um, Josh Silverman's as an example, Ibadul um, Chaim Tov and Rabbi Yehuda, Fra- uh, Rabbi Yehuda Frankel, and uh, y- Yudi Frankel was a, was yeah. a tremendous friend to me. I, again, I was a I was a tough, rambunctious kid. I mean, Monk, Zechatzarek Levracha, who I really love and respect. He and I did not see eye to eye for many years, and I had a lot of allies. And Rabbi Yudi Frankel was. Slanga Yorn was one of them. He uh, was a principal in, in Spring Valley in Muncie for many, many years. years yeah. uh, good, dear friend, person who took a tremendous interest with a smile, so sweet, so kind, nice, nice. Rabbi Yehuda, uh, Rabbi Yehuda Albaum was a learning director. Uh, tremendous, I mean, legends. These are real legends. Julie yes. Albaum, Rabbi Yehuda, Julie Albaum, Rabbi Yehuda Albaum. Okay. Rabbi David Cohn. Slanga Yorn, Rabbi David Cohn. Wow. Again, didn't appreciate Rab David and who he was until I was much. Machon. much what would he do for another Machon right now? Okay, now I'd go to Machon. <laughs> then I didn't go to then Machon. Then he would never go to Machon. No, but Rab David Cohn. <laughs> what a tremendous Shlita. What a, I mean, to have a person like Rab yeah. David Cohn. But it doesn't have to be only rabbinical figures. Yet I can tell you some names that probably you guys, I don't know if you you heard, may have heard of them. I went to camp at a time, uh, Rab, 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 Rabbi Elephant today, who's one of the biggest. Uh, Rashi Yosef Yeshivas, you know, Yosef Elephant from the Mir Yeshiva was a counselor in Camp Monk when I was there. I was like a little kid. I didn't know him, but now I see him, yeah. and we have Camp Monk in common. I was I never learned in the Mir. I got married very young. Okay, I, I, Ger- Gershon Kramer, the greatest. Uh, he was a great uh, basketball player. Basketball, I mean, the greatest they say, but, but that's because he's a great basketball player. But just the name Shmuley Tandler today is Rabbi Shmuley Tandler. Like, I haven't seen him in forever. He's, I mean, I can go on. The names go on and on and on of people that you get close with in camp, and all of a sudden you recognize that you're surrounded by great people. Gadali Zlatowicz is a perfect example. Gadali was a counselor in camp, okay? His father was, was Mayor Zlatowicz, who I'm a tremendous fan of, was unbelievably warm to me in the last years of his life. I, I just, our paths crossed. He was just a f- f- phenomenal person. Again, a regular person who just achieved greatness in life. You don't. It doesn't. And he had the he had the chip stacked against him in many ways. In many ways, read the story. I, I yeah. go back to his, his autobiography all the time. Stuff that that just he really stacked look what he against created. Him. Look what he created. Unbelievable. What, where would I? Where would we be? Where would we be without? You think Oscar? MetLife Stadium would have eighty thousand people sitting there for a Sima Shas? Without I, what? I, I can only say to you that I don't. I do it from a position of positive. The impact. The Beyond, there's no adjective that's in, that that would be be able to say the kind of impact that 
that Mayor Zlatowicz had on and has on Kal Yisrael, how productive and how wonderful my life is. I have Torah in my life, and I have Ashkafa in my life, and I have Alocha in my life, because for many people, reading Hebrew, translate on your own, is tough. Yeah. And art scroll. Now, as I get older, I'm fighting to learn it without always cheating on the art school, quote-unquote cheating. But for many years, I feel, well, I was a young, young balabas, and I started Dafyomi. Uh, David cheered me on for it, and we finished Shas. As art school was coming out with, mm. with, yeah. with, with, I, I, Zvachim, I did with art school, it had just come out, Zvachim, one, two, I think three, three and four. There was no art school for Menachas. I had to uh, go back. Very timely release. It Welcome. was so difficult. I remember doing it in my old Vilna Shas that my great grandmother bought me for my <laughs> wedding. I still have notes in, in my old <laughs> Vilna Shas and Menachas and doing it with, with uh, Sensino, working hard. The point is, is that you don't have to rise to the level of, of, the of, of, of art scroll yeah. to create, to do a legendary transcender thing, transcending thing like art scroll. You, it could be even starting an Office of Bono program in your shul. Yep. That's not that's no less important to the kid who's gonna have from that Office of Bonham and his father, that kid. The guy who's giving out the nash and making sure that the pizza is done and making sure that the music entertainment at the Malava Malka is solid and making sure that it's a great Malava Malka and there's a great program and a great storyteller. You're having an impact on kids. You don't know where those kids are going to end up and what their recollection is and how many other suburban programs are going to be started from all the years of your other suburban program. The point is, is that invest in Klal Yisrael, invest in kids yeah. with a smile. Invest in kids with a smile, with love and ernstkeit, authentic, not an avoider. Oh, it's just a yid. With the with, with the Abdava transmission, yeah, you yeah. bet. We'll be right back to this episode. Want to give right back a shout out to our friends at Mayor Punim. Mayor Punim is this amazing organization. If you haven't heard about them, you need to drop everything you're doing, unless you're driving. Don't drop that. That's important. You Very know, well done. Very well Stay well safe. Said. Mayor Punim is dedicated to making sure to feed and care for and assist all the needy people in Eretz Israel. Tons, of, like thirty thousand meals a day. That's is a program that they have. It's crazy. They provide social services. They have the backing of Rabbi Lau and Bibi Netanyahu <laughs> endorses them. <laughs> they have some incredible programs. They do, and they have running. And it's not just it's not just like a, a one program. They have a ton of programs, like you just said, Momo. So you really need to go head to mayorpunim.org. That's M E. It's Mayor, like the name. M E I R Punim P A N I M dot org. That's Mayor Punim dot org because they're not going to be able to do the work that they need to do, which is, you know, feeding all the hungry people in Eretz helping with kids at risk in Eretz uh Ukrainian refugees in Eretz They do so much of that, and you know what? If you don't live in Eretz the least you can do right now is help out Mayor Punim to take care of the people. That are that are living there that are maybe sacrificing in some way, um, so head to mayorpunim.org and and help out Clyserol. And of course, this isn't a meaningful people episode if we don't talk about Toro University. Our trailblazer for this week at Toro University is Judy Edelstein. Judy doesn't only work at PwC as a major accountant. She doesn't only have six kids. Six kids. Six children juggling a huge job at wow. PwC. PwC was one of the biggest accounting top, firms. Yeah, top four firm. In the world? I think I think globally, certainly in America. That's amazing. Well, Judy actually, you know, how, how did Judy find her way to get to PwC? It's a really interesting story. What happened? Yeah, so Judy's at Turo University and exploring her options, her career options. Turo University conducts a career fair where some small firms, mom and pop, Firms come down and get to meet the the candidates yeah. at Tour University. And guess what? But guess who came? else? Yeah, comes? guess who else came? <laughs> PWC. Legit. PWC yeah. came down to the Turo University career, career fair. fair. Yeah. Judy met with some people, interviewed, and has been climbing the corporate ladder ever since. It's unreal. And and uh, big shout out to Judy for being able to balance the family life and the career life. 
Uh, she's killing it, and, and and I think she gives a lot of credit to the training and the education she got at Tier University. So, you know, you've heard us talk about this for a long time. You want to have an awesome career. You want to be a great spouse, a great husband, a great wife, a great sister, brother, you know, cousin, aunt, third cousin, once removed, whatever you want to do. Comprehensive list. <laughs> Comprehensive list. Um, probably get a therapist, but also <laughs> go to Turo University. That's uh, 50.turo.edu. It's 50.turo.edu. It's time. It's time that you could take control of your career, taking control of what, what you want to accomplish in life and go to Turo University. And God bless you. And back to this episode. I, I want to take you back to, to Nahi's question, which I loved, which is Thank you, how do we identify the living legends among us And it's so much easier in retrospect to reminisce about it. And as I was hearing you describe your experiences of interacting with these people and experiencing the, just the orbit of these people, it occurred to me that I think, uh, tell me what you think, but I think that when you introspect and see where you feel alive around someone, that someone is bringing that out in you. Absolutely. And for me, post yeshiva years, um, for me personally, the the perfect segue from my Camp Monk Adelphia life into life of a balabas for me was um, and still is for me is for my rav, Rabbi Shimshin Shara. The the idealistic youthfulness of seeing great people and being around great people, and then living a life aspiring to do great things, okay, comes from having a great Rav. A Rav who cares about you and a Rav who muns from you. And I say this to people who ask me, not a yes man. Mm. Anyone for, can, our, for our strictly English listeners, mun is a fantastic way of saying, <laughs> saying demanding. Demanding, yes. Very good, I'm sorry, yes. There um, you go. For me personally, Rabbi Scherer, so There's people like so, Googling so it right now, and Stark like, like Monday has been has been a a a guiding light for me, and and someone who demands from me, and I can't I can't I can't get past him on that. Meaning I know exactly what he expects from me, and 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 why I'm bringing it up is for me it was the entree, the bridge from Josh Silberman's, who talked about Mike Tress, who talked about Rav Shraga Feivel, who talked about Rav Aaron Cutler, who talked about Rav Gedalia Shur, the giants of the Vat Hatzala. I can't imagine, I, for the life of me, I can't imagine that at a time of World War II where there were such unbelievable destruction and they were saving and trying to save these, 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 these handful of Yidin, how everyone wouldn't have jumped in head first to save them. And yet, it wasn't so. It wasn't so. You had a handful of heroes, Rav Aaron Kotler of Gedalia Shore, okay, and Rav Laza Silver, and, and the people that, how does a kid in the 1970s, how do you get to know about these people? Well, go to Camp Monk and hear about these people. Hear about them from Josh. Hear about them from Abdava Trank. Hear about them from the different people in, 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 in your orbit See pictures of them. Talk about them. Share us a plata. Who knew? What share us a plata? The Holocaust survivors. Who knew who they were? And I, 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 it wasn't effect. Had nothing to do with me. Had everything to do with me because so, it inspired me. It touched my heart. It touched my soul. And for me, the next step was okay. I got to connect myself with this orbit. Right. And that what to me meant a good Israel. Certainly, davening by Rav Shimshin Sharer. And I'm being influenced on a week by week basis, talking about his great father, his illustrious, his illustrious father, Amisha Shara. For me, that was like, like I, I'm in. Wow, take us take us from there though, to modern day, contemporary times, where those challenges that you described from post World War II era, our generation literally cannot fathom those challenges. Right. And they're dealing with a whole different host of challenges. To a family that's struggling with a child that's not on the derech or struggling with that, that is their challenge. And it's just as big as any challenge that we're discussing. Any, any family that's going through that difficulty with a child or parents or, or, or whatever it might be. I, I, 
I appreciate what you just said. And, you know, on a intellectual basis, if you think about it, the Holocaust, 6 million Jews, how could anything compare to that? And I would never dare to minimize that. But on the same account, families that are going through a terrible struggle. It's whatever, their personal Holocaust. That's, yeah. that's their personal... Having a kid who's sick, you know? A ch- child that's sick or, or, or not being able to get a child into a school. Oof. Okay, I, yeah. Let's touch. Let's touch the third rail. Let's 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 touch it. Okay, get in there, Chaskel. Chaskel. Well, I'm, not get, I'm not getting. I'm not criticizing the system. No, I'm no, not, Chaskel. No, Chaskel. No, no, I am no, saying solution. I am saying we have to recognize for this family, it's a churban. It is a churban, and I've said this publicly, and I'll say it again. When I was a kid, we begged the yeshivas to take the kids in, and. And I'm not sure that every kid got in. In this dar, we're begging the kids to take the yeshiva. Mm. And and Vamevin Yavin. Mm. So let's recognize that we have a lot of work to do. We and do. Some some of these things, some of the issues that we deal with are man made, you know? Some of them not, some of them it's, are. It's the product of tremendous growth. Yeah. It's the tr- product of tremendous um accomplishment. The community is much bigger than it ever was before. And Baruch Hashem Kane Yirbu. But with growth comes challenge, and we have a lot of challenges, and and there's a very a lot of disturbing stories. I hear it all over the place. I met a person last night at, at a wedding. It was I wasn't screaming at me, but he was <laughs> letting me have it that I have to do something. That kids are, are not have no place. They have no place. They can't get into yeshivas. I know. I know that you know. I get calls all because the time. Because of room or because of I, academics. I, I, whatever. Again, I don't want to. St- you know, I don't want to paintbrush the whole f- story. Mm-hmm. And everyone has their reasons why and how. Why and how. And and it, it's just very. It's e- too easy, too convenient, to just paintbrush it. And I'm not silly enough to do so. However, a Yiddish kid needs a yeshiva. And communities have to take responsibility. And a girl needs a bisako. I, mean. I, I just don't. I just don't. I fought for many children to get into yeshivas, not my own, Bar Hashem. But I try to try to fight for a kid, another kid as if it be my own, because my Rebbe, <laughs> read the book. Seems like you, you read the book. Read, like read read the Rabbi <laughs> Trink book. <laughs> Rabbi, there's a story. It's a story there. I think I I think I, Rabbi Bender. Forgive me. I love Rabbi Bender. He's the best. I think there's a story in the in the book of Rabbi Bender that they, that a kid was not uh, was sent out of the yeshiva or wasn't being accepted or something like that. And Rabbi Trink went with the kid to a wedding and found Rabbi Bender. <laughs> and Rabbi Bender, so so gesund, and he is he's a hero and he's a legend and he's okay. He's a legend. Yeah. There you go. You want to know a legend? There's a legend. So my, my love for Rabbi Bender is, is beyond beyond words. He's exactly he's the, the mechanic principal, Rosh Yeshiva, visionary in in the mold of my Rebbe of that. I'm saying my mold. They were contemporaries, mm-hmm. but they were together and, and they got this similar chinuch and they had a similar love for for children. And he went to Rabbi Bender and at a wedding called him out and, and Rabbi Bender said to him, Rabbi David, I hear you, but not here. <laughs> Okay, my Rebbe pushed the envelope and pushed the envelope and stood up at Torah and Masora conventions and screamed and yelled, About fighting it, yeah. for kids because they were talking. The question at the Torah and Masora convention, famously, again, I think it's in the book, but I, I know this as fact. One somebody got up and said, "At what point are we mechuyev to keep a child in yeshiva? When can we throw the child out?" Yeah, and Rabbi David got up and and started screaming and yelling. That's the question. That's the question. When can we throw a child out? When are we going to take every child in? It's got a. So it's the, got an echo. Yeah. So I, I, at at one of the uh, one of the dinners or of Malka for Shivam Reshes Yoshua, where I was charged by my friend Naftali Miller. You did, ah. a, you did a great job with him on on, in the, on the interview. Naftali. Naftali. Happy birthday, Naftali Miller. Oh yeah. It's his birthday today. Okay, happy birthday, Naftali. <laughs> Him and Menashe Frankel share yeah, a birthday. He's yeah, happy birthday. Very dear friend. We went to Yeshiva together. I, 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 I brought some take. Very proud, proud of him. Anyway, in, in Naftali Miller, uh, the fact is, I lost my train of thought. The fact is, is that <laughs> um, I, I, he gave me a job to introduce, uh, to be the main MC or the chairman. I don't remember, or whatever it was. I'm Reshus Yeshua. The, and yeah. Reshus Yeshua at Rabbi Trank's Yeshiva. And I said over the following story, I said that um, I believe the visions of Rebbe 
was asked by someone, by a Rebbe, that he wants to send a child out of the yeshiva, wants to throw out a child out of the yeshiva. And the Rebbe said to him, what's a child's name? And he's told him the child's name. He says, Nain, Nain. What's the child's name? What's his name? Tell him. What's his name? What's his name? Ben, his mother's name. Uh, from Yanko Ben Devira, or whatever the name was. And the Rebbe looked at him dumbfounded. I think it was Yeshua Moshe, the vision of the Rebbe. The story is said over in his name. And he didn't know. And the Rebbe got furious at him. You're asking me to take the very impossible, difficult position to e- throw a kid out of yeshiva and you don't even know the child's name? You never said a capital tell him for this boy? Leave me. Leave mm. my presence right away. I said this over. A machanach, like my rabbi, cried over his tummy. Then. It's really amazing. It's really amazing. And, and you continue you know, to, to do the work that you do. Obviously, you're, you have a very important position uh, with the Aguda. And it's important. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice of you. Every position is important at the Aguda. Everyone dresses so nicely, you know? I don't know. Um, Broke the mold. <laughs> <laughs> on purpose? I'm just being me. I, well, I think when, uh, when someone, and I don't know if you're going to like this, but when someone opens up a dictionary um, and they, they, they look up the word Askin, it's a picture of Haskell Bennett. That's, that's, so what does Askanus mean to you? And for our people who are watching, maybe they're watching, you know, again, this is airing for RCCS, uh, you know, um, for their program, or people are watching this on Meaningful People, for everyone wants to do something. What's, so what's, what's I, some I words think, for them? So I'll thank you for the compliment. I, I'm not, honestly, not, uh, to me, uh, asking is a Moshe Sharer, true asking. Um, but yeah, let's aspire. If you're doing for Tzarek Yitzibar, you're an Askin. Chazal say it, I don't say it. Caring about someone else, not living for yourself. Caring and being bothered. Not just caring. Being bothered. Being bothered, it bothers you. You see something wrong and you get angry about it. But not angry in a negative way, angry in a productive way. Get fired up. Yes, that's, that's very. It sounds very difficult though, because it takes time. It takes time because things bother me. They really do. I see things. You know, like for example, like this uh, kids not being allowed in school thing. It bothers me, but probably gets me in a negative angry. The, I'll, honest, you know, in, in, in my talk, younger talk, years. Talk, talk, let's go back. Talk to your rough. Yeah. Talk to a rough. Talk to your rough. First of all, Rabbi Sher has always given me very solid advice on on almost any issue. For those that don't know, Chatzkel's Rav is Moshe Sher's son. Rav Shimshin Sher. Yeah. Um, don't be a fanatic. Pro or con. Fanaticism is a bad thing. Fanaticism is, You're un- a Janky fan, is no? unhealthy, but I'm not a fanatic. There's a difference. I thought fan was short for fanatic. Right, if you want it to be. <laughs> okay. Yes, and uh, yeah. It's short for I though. knew. It I knew, I knew that would come up here. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that would come up here. Got you. And that's okay. Hey, 360 I'm, million. 60 I use it. 60 million. I, I use it as best as I can. <laughs> I enjoy it. And, and Speaking and, of legends. And, no kidding. <laughs> and uh, so for me personally, the Asconis is a, is a vehicle. And Agudas Yisrael is a vehicle. It is a vehicle to affect change. It is a vehicle to make a difference. As a Yachid, I have certain level of impact that I can make. But attaching myself, aligning myself with the Rabim um, makes that uh, effort uh, far more powerful, uh, far more impactful, and you have to be very careful which plug you plug into. If your plug is going into the wrong voltage, you short out. Mm. And for me, Agudas Yisrael has been the Gedele Yisrael, who lead Agudas Yisrael. For me, that has been the right voltage. That has been exactly the right voltage because aligning myself with Agudas Yisrael has allowed me to take my passion and my anger and my need to figure out how to affect some change, whether I'm doing it or I'm not, I'm doing it as a Kayach Rabim. And there's no question that the Kayach Rabim has far more impact and, and things that we can say and things that we can do and things that we've done has made an impact. 
If you don't like what's going on in Eretz Yisrael, you attach yourself to Agudis Yisrael and you go contact Congress and you fight and you try to help Eretz Yisrael in a time of need. When missiles are falling on Eretz Yisrael and everybody is wringing their head and crying over every report of every rocket that's going on and we're all saying to Hillam, that's great and we should be doing that we should be saying to him non-stop and we do it usually happens in the summer by the way i just frankly right, yeah. right it's the weirdest thing around tish above nine days the are and bored. then there's more and then there's more fight for the iron dome fight for support fight if there's a president that's maybe being a little bit difficult or not this is not a political conversation the point is if congress is being helpful or there could be more helpful whatever this the, by myself i'm one guy but with a Koyach at Sibur, I remember during one of the one of the wars, we we got activated. We went down as a group of 30, 40 Askana from all across the country. And we met with Congress members and senators from all across the country, from Chicago and from Florida and from New Jersey and from New York. I think like Irving Levovitz from, from, from Los Angeles. And we go to his... Another living legend. Great guy, wonderful person, great Askana, Tzarki Tzibur Ben person. Again, you can fight for Kal Yisrael. RCCS, as an example, doesn't have to be a good as you saw. RCCS takes the Kaya Harabim and helps the Yachid in, in, in unimaginable ways. A person, a family, gets a diagnosis that is a life-changing, life-altering diagnosis. They have absolutely no idea what to do. One phone call to one organization, you pick up the phone, counselors, referrals, experts, they'll send... They'll, Make sure you're not getting a good doctor. They'll make sure you're getting the best doctor with the best care. And if you're not happy and you don't understand and you're not sure, hold your hand, counsel you, walk you through it. Come on, walk someone through it. This is not um, a, a chalaim. This is not a dream. Yeah. This is real life. It's happening. Every single day. How many, I, how many, I, you know, one of the, one of the plugs that you you know talking about voltage that you plug yourself into is RCCS. You know you are involved, and it's definitely worth you know bringing up and discussing the work they do. How many patients that they you know unfortunately are going through again, like we mentioned before, the personal Holocaust to get such a phone call and to find out such news, and th- there are situations maybe not in 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 our circles. Thank God, for people who don't have access to RCS that I can't afford this treatment. My insurance is an issue with this, or, but I, we don't. I, it's, I believe so. The, to answer your question, I believe the number in this year, in the last twelve months, is is a little bit less than five thousand people. I believe like forty six hundred people, be'erach, individuals who have su- been clients and suffered are suffering some sort of uh, disease or some sort of diagnosis, and they're being assisted by RCCS. I believe that's in the United States and Israel. Again, uh, we can we can check the numbers and, and be more, more accurate about it. But this is not a one year thing. This is a, this has been going on for quite yeah. quite a number of years. And here, I'll give you a perfect example. Somebody had uh, been given a diagnosis, a, a terrible diagnosis. Family didn't know what to do, and the doctor looked at them and said, "Do you have? I know that you came to see me. I know that you it was a you, you paid it out of pocket. Do you have insurance?" And they said, uh, we have insurance, but it's it, you didn't take the kind of insurance we had. It's obviously not a premium insurance. And the doctor said, don't worry. In your community, you have RCCS. Wow. Okay, this was a secular doctor in, in, in one of the better hospitals over the Columbia or, or, uh, or a memorial. They know. They know. They know. We're talking about RCCS. You know if you get a flat tire, you could call Chaverim. And you know Chas Shalom if you get assaulted, or Shalom, someone gets assaulted, or there's a problem in the community, you can call the local Shamrim. You know, I don't have to tell you, you know that the community, the esteem that the community holds Hatzala in. These are individual volunteers, individual people who are giving to Kal Yisrael. Ish kematnas yadai, each person according to what they could give. Not everyone can take a blood pressure, and not everyone can fill a tire, and not everyone can go out at two o'clock in the morning to protect the community. But everyone can do something, mm-hmm. and that is Kal Yisrael today. And that, to me, is something to applaud. It's something to talk about. 
It's something to be proud of. It's something to make sure our kids know about it. There's a lot of negativity. There's a lot of challenges. But there's a lot of beautiful things about Kal Yisrael. I'm into that. I'm onto that. I live for that. I just, I just want people to, to recognize with the challenge comes opportunity. And we have stepped up. And RCCS, in a very big way, has stepped up in an area, like, again, of need. And it's not pretty. It, it, it's very difficult. And I've been in their office, and I've done a lot of different things with them, and the stories are hair-raising, and the, the life-saving ability of this organization and what they've accomplished is, is, is I, words will not do it justice. As a longtime Hatzalah member, I am machshev, I appreciate, I, I recognize, I applaud people who are answering a call when someone else is in the most devastated of ways. To me, that is the very best of Kali Yisrael. It's the very best of humanity, to be honest. And we're living in a time where humanity itself is under siege. Civilization under siege. There's just no menschlichkeit. Mm-hmm. Translate menschlichkeit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that has a translation. Right. So, uh, I, I, see. I think that I think well, that good. you know people, as you're mentioning, character is not measured by how someone celebrates a victory, but it's how one endures adversity. Sure. And RCCS is at the forefront of just carrying through, carrying individuals and families, frankly. Yeah. Through adversity, right. I I I could I couldn't be prouder of to affiliate with them to help them. Uh, I I know that they're doing uh, their 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 annual telethon, and um, just I try to help them this once a year to to just lend my support to them. Again, just to lend my 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 voice to them. You know, you have a voice taking taking something that you think can make a difference. Again, anyone can do it. I would say. As wonderful as RCCS is, and they're fantastic, there are hundreds of uh, women who are doing home parties all across the world, all across the country for sure, who are raising the money for RCCS yeah. budget this year. They don't get enough play. That means they opened up their home, and they worked hard to call all their friends and sent them all the text messages and all the phone calls and all the stuff. Could you give? Could you give? Could you give? You get them all every day. Not so easy. I've done it. We've all done it, you know. And, and, and so those, those women who have opened up their hearts and have extended themselves and said, you know what, I will be that person and I will do that parlor meeting or that hostess meeting. I don't know what they call it in RCCS. Kala Kavod. Legends. Kala Kavod. And your children see you. And it makes a ration. Mm-hmm. And your daughters see you. And your sons see you. And don't be surprised. Be'ezus Hashem. They also will live a life of chesed because they saw it. They didn't. You didn't just tell them to do something; you actually did it. It's it's so important, and it's something that I specifically in this example with RCCS. It's like the contrast of like you know what goes on in the world at large and what goes on in our from world is like you know. I remember watching a Met game and and they were announcing I think they were doing a, a fundraiser for St Jude and like Keith Hernandez or Gary Cohn. Not a Yankee fan. Relax, Met fan. Um, <laughs> you are a Yankee fan. I'm not a Yankee fan. Maybe. Mets. Maybe. So, was it Shvaris as I needed? Was it? Anyway, did, did, I, did I say that right? Did I say that right? Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. Oh, thank you. It's my first Yiddish I ever seen in my Queens. life. From Queens. What do I know? Yeah. That was fantastic, dude. Thank you so much. Oh, you from f- Europe? Ah, Lithuania, actually. Nice. It's in Europe, right? Lithuania. I actually <laughs> get excited when I see uh, the sports figures. Doing that kind of charitable work. Oh yeah, it makes me happy. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Yeah, because we have this vision of them being this the most selfish, you know, into themselves, money, money, yeah. money, money, and it's all they care about is money, money, money. And I think it it has a ratio on the world around them that people see that hey, you know, when you're kind, would you stop and just give a kid a smile? Yeah, I just I get and be kind. Yeah, be kind. I it's get, gotta be kind. I get, is that, that that's the theme of this? that's the thing? Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah, I, I have no, gotta always I, be I've kind. Noticed that. But like I was, I was watching and they were saying like, oh, Keith, could you believe it? We just raised fifty thousand dollars for Saint Jude. I'm like, dude, and like that's after like a, like three weeks of doing it on SNY. Like RCCS 
raises like five million dollars in three days. Like unreal. And then the next day, like Boney Olmo raised ten million. <laughs> and then the next day, High Lifeline. Not the great organization. It's crazy, but like, this is who we are. Like, you look at you know, especially in a, in a with a partial like this, where nobody wants to call RCCS. Nobody ever wants to call them. It's not scary. It's, it's not something that someone wants to do. I, I'm I'm from the school of you know insurance policies. Supporting RCCS is an insurance policy. For a person, oh yeah, Baruch Hu, Mida Mida, go out of your way for people you'll never know, you'll never see, but you're helping them in a significant way. You're being generous. It's, it's really, it's, it's, it really is the best of Chai Yisrael. It really, really, really is. I'm so proud of the work that they do and all the work, all the organizations that they're doing fantastic work, and there's a lot to be proud of. You, um, you have a story. You were a first responder on September 11th, and I would, lo- I would love to hear sort of from. You know, yeah. From your your perspective, what that day was like. Um, yeah, I, I I don't talk about it often anymore. It's like ancient history, but for me, it's not ancient history because something that impacted me for a long time. It still impacts me, but Baruch Hashem, not not in the same way as it's been twenty years plus. Now I think twenty one years. Um, yeah, uh, Hatzala was uh, famously f- responded to the World Trade Center. It was Slichus. I remember. I left Shul late. I was on the phone with my father because we used to learn Mishnah Brura on the way to, when I was on the way to work back in the day. And I used to drive down towards Williamsburg. That's where my office was. And the radio went crazy. Playing, a friend of mine, one of the members who, I, who knew, a friend of mine called it in. I said to my father, I said, Dad, I, I, I got to go. I, uh, there's, a, there's a big call. I think there's a plane crash. And it's one of those times where you don't listen to your father, you get into trouble. <laughs> and my father said, shut off the radio and learn with me. Wow. I said, Dad, I can't. And uh, ended up getting into Lower Manhattan before the first the tower fell. Um, yeah, it was scary. Right away I came to Lower Manhattan and uh, very frightening, terrifying. You still see it. Um, Lower Manhattan at that point it was still sunny. Beautiful morning, September morning. And uh, we started treating patients right away. I was wearing yellow vest. People were terrified, running sirens everywhere. We didn't really understand what we were getting ourselves into. And uh, at one point, we had set up uh, a triage area. Um, first on Trinity Place, on the steps of the church, there's actually a picture of it. There, We were treating patients with uh, uh, asthm- asthmatics, um, Fright, just sheer fright. People having chest pains, uh, glass cuts. They had been running on the street. There was glass all over the floor because it yeah. crashed in and things fell down. Total chaos, bedlam. Um, and then we had to move, and so we moved to to John Street uh, to Broadway. We moved to Broadway and we set up a shop in Broadway again. Ambulances were coming and we were transporting these pictures of this too somewhere out there. And we were transporting patients, and we were treating patients, and we were wearing my yarmulke and my, my, my green vest. And I remember re- remember being cognizant of the fact I was wearing my yarmulke, my vest, my titus. It was just a wild scene. You couldn't even hear yourself think. It was so chaotic. And all of a sudden, this big whoosh. And if you ever see the video of, of, uh, of 9-11, you'll see this black cloud. We didn't know anything. I heard this big whoosh. That big whoosh was the building coming down. I didn't know at the time what it was. And then this black cloud just coming from all sides. I just ran. I ended up in the basement, the first floor of number 11 John Street in the lobby. And uh, yeah, it was terrifying, absolutely terrifying. No idea what happened. I thought another plane had crashed. I had no clue. Uh, there was no phone service anymore. Yeah, The building had crashed, so there went the phone service. And when I was running, so the cops had set up a perimeter of caution tape, that yellow, do not cross. And I was running, my radio got stuck on this yellow tape. And I was trying to run, and I couldn't run. It was like something was holding me back, and these black clouds coming at me. I'm running, and I'm pushing, I'm pushing. Finally, my radio flips off my belt. So here I am, in this lobby, 40 other people, wearing my green vest and looking at me like I know what to do. Mm. I have absolutely know what to do. I don't have my radio. I don't have a cell phone. It's me 
in the Rabbani Shalom. And 40 people were looking at me like, I know what to do. Open up the door. I stare out. Choshech. Complete and total blackness. Dark. I thought a building had fallen on Lower Manhattan this way over the buildings that we were in and we were trapped. I remember vividly saying, Rabbani Shalom, I'm in trouble. Please help me. Baruch Hashem, we weren't trapped. Ended up staying there for a bit. Daylight returned to Lower Manhattan. A sea of ash everywhere. Three, four, five inches of ash on the street like had it been a blizzard, like a snowstorm. Everybody was walking towards the water, away from Lower Manhattan, towards the FDR Drive. So I started walking that way. Ended up in Beth Israel Hospital. I called my wife, told her I'm alive. And, uh, she says, please come home. I said, I can't, I have work to do. Ended up no patients. After that, there were no patients. We, had, we were expecting patients, but the patients never came because unfortunately the building, had, both buildings had collapsed. And um, very traumatic. I'm, I'm, I'm condensing a very yeah. traumatic time. I would only say one thing that would be relevant to this conversation here. I thought the world was over. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't even bear to see a plane flying low, coming into JFK like we, like you see yeah. all the time. I, I just, I didn't trust it. And happens to be about a month later, there was a plane crash in Bell Harbor. Mm-hmm. Uh, terrible plane crash, terrible. It just, it just reinforced all of everybody's fears. I had gone to a to a major community asifa, to a community gathering where Ramatasio Salman Salzain Gazun Shavar Rafur Shalema gave a, gave us gave a drasha gave a speech. His drasha was off the charts. Was amazing. I can still remember the drasha. I remember what he said. He says in the time of, of Mashiach, he said, uh, "We know that the eagle is the metaphor for Kali Yisrael." He says, "And Kali Yisrael is going to get on a kafein as the Mefarshim tell us, and we're all going to go, going to fly." He says, but in the time of Mashiach, why the eagle? The eagle flies high above everybody and protects its young. How does it protect its young? It protects its young by the young being on top of the wings as opposed to all the other birds that hold their child underneath. The eagle holds the child. But the children of an eagle, the little eagleach, <laughs> have to do one thing. The eagle flies low and comes down to the ground. They have to climb on in order to get the protection of their mother. Amatasio Salman said, the eagle is here. We need, now need to climb on to get the Rabbani Shalom's protection. Wow. That was one thing he said to us. And then the second thing he said was, you're all shooken up now. You're all scared. Take on a Kabbalah. Take on a Kabbalah. And he suggested two Kabbalahs. One I didn't do, and one I still do, 20 plus years later. One was bench inside a sitter at all times. I've tried it, but it's so difficult. Yeah. And one is, he was almost screaming. Isn't it time to now believe Ani Mamim, Bemun Shlema? Say Ani Mamim, say it like you mean it. And I was very nispal from it. But the point of the Mashkiach was not to take on big Kabbalahs, take on small Kabbalahs. You don't want to change the world. You had an earth-shattering event. You're going to change the world now. That doesn't work, says the Mashkiach. Small Kabbalahs. 20 years later, I still say Animamim, and I still remember the Drasha every time I say Animamim, wow. and I say it six days a week. Wow. Yeah. The takeaway from this, this conversation, to me, what stands out is sort of like, you know, being connected to the past, but investing in the future how important it is to really learn from the people who have trailblazed ahead of us, the legends, the eagles, you know, the people who, who, who have done so much to make sure that we could be sitting here with the freedoms we have and the things that we're able to do. But we have to invest in the future. We have to invest in, in, the, in, the, in our children. We have to invest in our organizations, a place like RCCS, a place like Boney Olam, Lachai Lifeline, Hatsala, Agoda. We have to make sure that you know, that they're able to continue doing what, what we need them to do forever and ever. I, um, I would just ask your audience, the audience, to just, again, to reiterate the message. 
Um, I'm very proud to have been affiliated, to be affiliated with special people, find special people in their lives. doesn't have to be, you know, somebody the whole world is chasing after. You know, it's close of having had gone to Rav Chaim Kanievsky many, many times in my life, Baruch Hashem, to fight, to get to him, just to be in his presence. Mm-hmm. It's not like we conversed, just to get a bracha from him, just that, that stays with me. Find chashava people, find special people, find good people who inspire you, who bring out the best in you, who make a roshim on you and your children. And it, for my life personally, it's my rav, some my parents, I had a gr- my grandfather was a spectacular person, a smiley, happy person. The point is, and Gedol Yisrael, for me personally, being affiliated with the Agud, the Nomitz Karebbe, Zechaz Adav Kaddish Lavracha, of Shmuel Kamenetsky Tzalang Yaren, the most special of special people who took on Klal Achrayis. If you want to be a Klal Achrayis person, connect yourself to people who have shown in their actions, in their words, in their deeds of what it means to be a, 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 a Baal Achrayis. And, and if that's important to you, then those are the people you should be surrounding yourself with. Chatzko. Yes, sir. Shem should give you strength to Amen. continue doing you too. his work and taking care of his people. Amen. Thank you. Appreciate your time. We really hope that you enjoyed this episode of Meaningful People. Wow. Ch- Chasco. Chasco. Yeah, he has a... Fire! Fire! If I had a, a cat in this room during the interview, like just wandering around, it would probably turn into a lion by, by the time it finished listening to Chasco. He has that ability. But like people take the call seriously. Yes. Yes. It's such an empowering message from Chasco to just identify what is your Indian? What's your talent? What do you bring to the table? What can you offer Klal Yisrael? And if you have it in you, start something new. If you if you just have a little extra time and some bandwidth that you want to allocate to Klal Yisrael, find an organization, find a cause that you can contribute to, that you can get involved and in, roll up your sleeves. Yeah. And we've gotten so good at like contributing our monetary resources. But I, what I hear from Chatzkol is find a way to, to allocate your time. Listen, the same, which is your most valuable resource. In the same Indian of Meiser, 10% also applies to time. Exactly. You can't just give 10% of your income. Like, Momo can't just give $10 million to Tzedakah. Rony he also has to give 10% of your time. Yeah, and, no, and And that's important. Like, the same way you have a Meiser account, have a Chesed time account where you have this 10% of whatever your day is that you're going to be doing something. And I love what Haskell said of the best is yet to come. The organization that's going to change the world even more and more and more is lying in the recesses of the minds of you. Exactly. And I'll, t- I'll, s- I'll throw something else in there. I was talking with uh, Yehuda May. Shout out. Awesome guy, by the way. Yehuda May. Talking to him at a, at a wedding last night. And we were we were rehashing this this discussion this this point, and it's not only starting an organization, and it's not only getting involved in an existing organization, but sometimes it's just while you're driving from one place to the next, giving someone a call yeah. and being there for someone it doesn't have to be this grandiose contribution of time and a role that you're taking on. It's just being there for another person. Yeah, that's what they say about like you know, people like Rabbi Meir's Lotowitz, people like Rabbi Trank. That they just used time and they cared about other people. And it's but forget about the big stuff they've done, like Art Scroll or starting Yeshivas. It's the emails that they sent on a Friday afternoon, just checking in on someone to see how they're doing. You know? Yeah. So you all have the power to, to change someone's day, to make someone smile, and, and that can impact generations and generations and generations. And we're very happy that we had Costco on Meaningful People. We're hoping that this made an impact in your life. Of course, if it did, please leave a review. Go, go to Apple, Spotify. Apple, you could, I think Spotify, you can leave a rating. Um, Spotify, uh, Apple, you can also leave a rating, um, but you can also leave a review on Apple. We really appreciate reading those reviews. And of course, if you have any feedback, we would love to hear from you. You can email us at meaningfulpeoplepodcast at gmail.com. That's meaningfulpeoplepodcast at gmail.com. And we cannot wait to see you next week. We want to wish everybody an early Freilich and Hanukkah. Yes. I know, and we, we can't wait to come at you with something really cool for Hanukkah. So stay tuned. Enjoy your family time. Don't eat too many donuts. You're going to get sick. You're going to regret it. You're going to have to call some nutritionists and say, I ate too many donuts. I had like seven donuts today. Don't do it. Because your voice changes once you have that number of donuts. Because something you didn't know is that donuts are packed with helium. Interesting. Yes, they are. It's a conspiracy theory. Anyway, enjoy the donuts. Enjoy the donuts. Enjoy the family. Have a great Hanukkah. Adios. 
hope you enjoyed this video from Meaningful Minute. We have so much more content for you. You may like this. You may like this. Take your pick. Let us know what you think.